Welcome to This New Life. This morning, the father of the house, Pastor Paul Chase, will be speaking more on it's going to be a great year. I don't know how your 2014 has been, but one thing we know, 2015, it's going to get better as you keep your eyes on Jesus. And so sit back, relax, enjoy this word because I know it's going to bless you. I want to share something with you that uh, as we begin this year, uh, probably going to take me a couple of weeks to go through this, but I believe that, that this is going to be a great year. How many of you are ready for a great year? How many of you are ready for a better year this year than last year? How many of you believe God wants you to have a good year? I believe that. I had this verse come up in my spirit, and I really believe the Holy Ghost directed me this way. Now, it, when you first look at it, it's not the most positive verse, but I believe as we continue through it, we're going to get a lot of life out of this. In Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, most people, when they quote this verse, they just quote the first part of it. It says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Now, you notice the first two words there. It says, my people. This is not talking about strangers. It's not talking about people outside of a covenant with God. It's referring to the children of Israel, the Jews, people that God, that, that God had a covenant with, which he began with Abraham, then Isaac and Jacob. They're his people. Just like in the New Testament, the, the church, believers today, we would be called his people. We would be called his sons and his daughters. We're born of his spirit. We have his life and his nature on the inside of us. But here God is saying, my people are destroyed. Now, I don't believe that God wants destruction to come to his people. I don't believe, believe it's God's will for destruction to come to his people. I don't believe God wants you to suffer destruction this year. And that's why I want to go this way. I want to begin today and, and for the next couple Sundays is I believe that you and I can make some decisions beginning, if you haven't already, the beginning of this year, we can make some decisions in the next couple weeks that are going to determine the course of this whole year. That when we get to the end of this year, we can look back and say, that was one of the best years I've ever had. I believe we can see increase come in our families. I don't believe that we have to suffer destruction. I believe with all of my heart that it is not God's will for you to suffer destruction. I don't believe that's God's will. Now, of course, as, as I'm sharing, I'm not going to communicate that life is going to be free from problems or challenges. There is no such life free from problems or challenges. Jesus said, these things I have spoken unto you that in me you will have peace. In the world... You will have tribulation. You'll have temptations, tests, and trials. But be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. So in the world, we're going to have challenges. In the world, as long as we're in the world, we're going to have problems because we're surrounded by people. And most of our problems are related to people. How many of you know right now that any kind of pain in your life, you probably have a face that comes to your mind? Don't look at the person next to you. Amen. Amen. And because we're, we, we deal with people, we usually uh, experience pain. We, our disappointments, our frustrations, uh, uh, neglect, abandonment, abuse, angry words, criticisms, judgments, unkind actions. These are all interactions that we have as we go through life and we deal with people. Well, Pastor, when am I going to get to the place where I, have never, I, I never have any more problems? Heaven. But as long as you live on earth, there's challenges. Christianity is not the absence of problems. Peace doesn't mean there's no problem. Peace is a strength. Peace is a presence. Peace is a person that walks with you no matter through the storm, no matter the challenge, no matter whether there's waves. You know, in, in, in Psalms it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why? Thou art with me. Peace is the knowledge of knowing that someone walks with you through any kind of challenge, through any kind of pain or disappointment. Now, I don't believe God wants us to suffer destruction. He says, my people, let's go back to Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, a lack of knowing. A lack of knowledge of his will, a lack of knowledge of his purposes, a lack of knowledge of his plan, 
a lack of knowledge of direction, a lack of knowing Him. Now, we can change that because if we lack something, we can turn around and not lack it. Now, there's three things here. Most people, when they quote Hosea 4, 6, they just say, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But really, when you read through the verse, there's three things in this verse that cause destruction to come. One is a lack of knowledge. The other one is a rejection of knowledge. And then the third one is the forgetting of the law of the Lord or the knowledge of God's word or God's law. So if you forget something, if you reject something, or if you lacked it to begin with, destruction can come in your life. And again, God is qualifying it from the beginning and said, these are my people and they're suffering unnecessarily. I believe bad things happen to good people. And I don't believe that unnecessary bad things have to happen to you this year. So that's why we're going to begin this year so we can stop unnecessary destruction. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, let's go there. Come unto me. See, how many of you know that's a decision we make? Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. To be able to just go rest, to be at peace. He said, you come to me, I'll give you rest. Next verse. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Not just hear about me, learn from me. I believe this year, if you'll make some decisions to learn from him, things will change. Learn from him. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, lowly in heart, humble. And you will find, what? Rest for your souls. What is your soul? Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Most people are so nervous and and full of anxiety. A lot of people dealing with fear. Some people can't sleep. As some people, because of disappointment or sadness, their minds, their, and your soul being your mind, your will, and your emotions are agitated, and you're not at peace, and, and there's constant conflict. He says, listen, I will find rest for your soul. If you'll learn from me and learn of me, the result is rest for your soul. It's another thing in Psalms 23. He says, he restores my soul, to where your mind, your will, your emotions are at peace. Peace is not the absence of problems. Peace is the presence of something greater with more of an influence in your life than the problems that surround you or face you. If you're waiting to have peace because all your problems disappear, you may never have peace. Peace is the presence of a person and this strength that comes into your life that even though the problems are there, your awareness of this person is greater than your focus on the problem. You're not ignoring the problem. You're not saying, oh, I don't have any problems. But you're ignoring that there's a greater one in your life for your life that will see you through the problem. So the influence of this person in your life is greater than the influence of this outward pressure. But we need to learn of him. And if we lack knowledge, if we lack really knowing him, who he is to us, what he's done for us, then we're not going to be able to walk in the ways that he wants us to walk. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. Let me go through a couple verses and and, and bear with me because I know some of these verses you're going to say, oh, I've heard that verse. Oh, I... It's not about the hearing of the verse. It's about the knowing of a verse and it's working in your life. Amen. Joshua chapter one, verse eight says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then, this is very important. It says, then, then, Everybody say you. Then you will make your way prosperous. 
The majority of people are praying and waiting for God to make their way prosperous. And if you look at this verse, he says, listen, if you'll meditate in this word, if you'll take this word and think about it and think upon it, let it begin to go from your head down into your heart. If you let something sink down into your heart, then out of the abundance of what's in your heart, it'll begin to come out of your mouth. You notice it says, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Why is something coming out of your mouth? Because it's in abundance in your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth. When you can so easily criticize and judge and complain and murmur, then the abundance of God's word is not filling your heart. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night to observe to do according to all that is written therein. So you think about this word, and as you think about this word, as you think about these laws and these principles that are there to protect your life, bless your life, provide for your life, as you think about these and you observe to walk in them, as soon as you observe to walk in them, you have now made your way prosperous. You can look on the back of the majority of jeepneys in the Philippines and it says, God bless our way. Well, how many of you know that God's way is already blessed? Now, the reason they have to pray that is because of the way they drive. If you're praying so hard, God bless this, God bless... Listen, when you know it comes from God, it's already blessed. God's ways are blessed. God's will is blessed. And when you meditate on his word as to where it's something that you choose to do, once you choose to walk in the knowledge of his word, which is the revealing of his will, because his word reveals his will, his way, and his person. And when you choose to walk in that word, when you choose to do according to what is written therein, you have now positioned yourself to succeed. What I want you to see, the choice is not God's. It's yours. Many people are praying and waiting for God to make a decision to bless you. Are you kidding me? He made a decision over 2,000 years ago to bless you. He made a decision. The Bible says that Jesus is the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He made a decision even before Jesus ever came and was born, which we celebrate on Christmas, the prophets throughout the Old Testament prophesied of the coming of the Messiah. God had already made a decision that he was going to send an answer for the need of man. Many people today are waiting for God to make a decision to bless them. Are you kidding me? God has already provided whatever is needed and necessary. And you and I, if we lack knowledge of his word, of his will, and his ways, then we don't know how to walk, and we don't know how to talk, and we're not going in the right direction, so we're constantly struggling. But when we have the direction that we are to walk in, in the way that we are to walk, and the way that we are to treat people. Micah 6 verse 8 says, He has shown thee, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of thee? Do justly, love mercy, walk humble with God. It's not complicated. He has shown you, O man, what's good. And what does God really require? Do justly. In other words, do what's right. Love mercy. Be kind. Stay humble. Do what's right. Be kind. Stay humble. It's not hard. It's not complicated. But every one of those is a decision. Doing what's right is a decision. Being kind is a decision. Because when I, when I look in the knowledge of God's Word and I see that forgiveness needs to be a part of my life, that I need to forgive my brother when he does something against me, that when he speaks evil of me, I don't revile back, I don't respond back, that I bless those who curse me, I pray for those who use me. Now, that's not easy. But when I observe to do according to what's written... What I've done is I've now brought a protection upon my life, and this way is going to be blessed. That's what Joshua 1 8 is trying to show us. That you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, then you, you make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. Anybody want to prosper this year? One, two, three, four, five, six. Come on, how many of you want to prosper this year? How many of you want to be successful this year? 
See, that's what this whole message is for. I want to see you prosper. I want to see you succeed. I want you to prosper in every area of your life. And that's what God wants. Prosperity is more than money in the bank. Prosperity is having a strong and healthy body. Prosperity is having peace in your heart. It's prosperity is having wisdom for decisions in your life. Prosperity is a true prosperity is having a faithful wife that really loves you. True prosperity is having a faithful husband that really loves you. True prosperity is when your family is in order. True prosperity is more than just gold, silver, or money. In fact, when you read Proverbs, which you'll probably get to next week, it says that the number one thing you should seek is not the gold and not the silver, but wisdom and knowledge and understanding. The proceeds of wisdom and knowledge and understanding are far greater than gold, silver, or rubies. The proceeds that come from wisdom cannot be compared to any other riches in life. So let's not limit prosperity to money. But God wants you to prosper and He wants you to succeed. He wants you to make your way prosperous and for you to have good success. Now let's look in 3 John 2. Just foundational verses as I'm trying to get through my introduction. Beloved, this is, this is John. He said, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in, in what? Come on, say that again. What does God want you to prosper in? Does God want you to fail? Does he want destruction in your life? Does he want you to prosper? In which areas? I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in just as your soul prospers. You see, he wants your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotions to prosper. It's out of the prosperity of your soul, which is where your mind is and your will is. It's out of a prospering soul. And the reason your soul prospers is because you've taken your will where you choose. And if you've chosen to submit your will to the knowledge of his will. It stops destruction. My people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. What do they lack knowledge of? They lack knowledge of this covenant. They lack knowledge of this will that he's made available. They lack knowledge of a direction and a peace and a provision that God has for them. And because they don't know about it, they don't partake of it. So we're going to do everything that we can. Every man and woman that stands on this platform is to communicate a truth to you so you can learn of him and from him so you find rest for your souls. And so this year you continue to grow and prosper and destruction ceases. No more destruction in areas of your marriage. No more destruction in areas of your family or your business. No more destruction in your, in your physical body or your soul or tormented by fear. No more destruction. Come on, somebody say amen. I don't know about you, but I'm ready for more this year. But what you need to understand, it's your choice. It's not God's. It's your choice. That's why when we watch people progress in life, God has no favorites. He loves us all. God has no respect of persons. He loves us all. He has no favorites. Yeah, but you know, I, I see some people prospering and other people struggling. Well, God didn't make the decision of what they were going to walk in. They made the decision. They made the decision and they determined, I'm not going to lack knowledge of who he is. I'm going to grow in the knowing of who he is this year. I'm going to know him better this year than I knew him last year. To listen to the whole message and to learn more about New Life and its ministries, visit newlife.ph. If you have a testimony you'd like to share or a prayer request, email newlife at newlife.ph.